Tailwind CSS makes it super easy to add animations to your applications, so long as the animations that you want are just one of these four animations with very little customization. Now, don't get me wrong, it's nice to be able to just make stuff spin or ping or whatever, but generally we probably want a little bit more control than this, and we want to be able to do that without writing custom CSS that then needs to get loaded on every page and doesn't really leverage any of the cool stuff that Tailwind does for us. So today we're going to take a look at how we can extend these animations and add new ones and even some utilities that we can use outside of Tailwind to create a better experience. Super quick before we actually get started in looking at that though, I run a website called hover.dev where I build a whole bunch of really cool animations with React, Tailwind CSS, and Framer Motion. You can find components on there for hero sections and buttons and nav bars and all kinds of fun stuff. And I actually even just released my first set of templates. I'm continuing to run a sale for the website through the end of this week. So if it's something that you've ever thought about purchasing, now is probably not the worst time. But anyways, back to the video. First things first, let's just kind of get rid of this initial animation that we have right here here and let's check out how we can extend the basic animations that actually come with Tailwind CSS. So for example, maybe you still want a spin animation like this, but you want to be able to, you know, change the times and name it something else so that you can grab it in different parts of your app. Now, the way that we can do this is the same way that we extend Tailwind CSS in general, and that is using our Tailwind config file. In order to add a new animation, I can come to my theme in this file and then come under extends and look for the animation key. And under animation, I can just add a new name. So I could say something like spin slow. Now what we'll need to remember is there's already a couple of animations that are available to us by default. So spin is one of them by example. We can actually see that if I come back over here and uncomment this. And if I hover over this, we'll see that the name of this animation is spin. There's four or five of these, but because of this, we can actually just reference these by name. So for spin slow, I can say spin and then add my normal animation CSS. So maybe we'll do something like one second with a linear ease and we want this to run infinitely. Now that that's added, I can actually utilize this. So if I type in animate, we'll see that I now have animate spin slow and that has the parameters that we actually just set up we can also actually do this in line if we really want to so if i add a new line like this i can do my normal arbitrary value stuff like you do with any other tailwind css so i could just add square brackets and i could do something like you know spin right here and we could say 10 seconds linear infinite if we wanted to do it this way. And we should see that this works as well. So now we have a much slower animation, but of course we probably sooner than later are gonna want different animations than these basic animations that come with Tailwind CSS. In order to do that, we can actually define these directly in our config file as well. So I'm gonna give myself one more line down here and I'm gonna remove this animation and we'll say we wanna make a new animation called wiggle. In order to add my animate wiggle class right here, what I'm gonna need to do is I'm gonna come back over to my Tailwind config, and we're going to define it not just in this animation right here, because we need to know what, you know, wiggle is going to be. So here in a second, we'll have something like wiggle, and that we'll call a wiggle animation. But in order to actually define that animation, I need to add one more thing here, and that's the actual keyframes. So if I open up the keyframes key right here, that we want to define for the wiggle animation. Now, the way that we actually set these up is the same way as we would do in kind of a normal CSS keyframe animation. So I can start by adding my stops here. We'll say maybe 0%. 100% and at this case we want to add a transform of let's say minus nine degrees and then at 50% not 500%, 50%. We want to be at a transform of nine degrees. And this will now actually make this wiggle down here work, right? Because we're defining a keyframe called the wiggle, which then we can call from our other animations. And I just realized I also forgot to add the rotate here. Rotate. I knew I was forgetting something. So not just nine degrees minus nine degrees. We also want to add these rotates here as well. And if I save that, we'll see that we actually already added this animation over here, which we can now hover and actually see our definition right here. And this will add our new wiggle animation. Now this is all very cool, but it's kind of the extent of what you can actually do with just base Tailwind CSS. They don't actually offer you ways to say, you know, ease in out. We'll see that this actually pops up, but if I hover over it, this is transition timing, not animation timing. Same with something like delay 1000. This exists, but it's just for transition, not right, not for actual animations. You also can't do things like conditionally play or pause an animation. And in order to do that, we're actually going to need to use a plugin. So I have that documentation right here. And the plugin that we're going to use is this one right here. It's called Tailwind CSS Animate. Now, if you've never used a plugin for Tailwind CSS before, the way that it works is very simple. So you just need to install it into your application. And then in the plugins array, which can be found inside of your config, you just need to require whatever that 
plugin is. Now there's plugins for all kinds of stuff, but really all that they do is add additional utility classes to your project that can be used for different things. So for this one, for instance, you can do things like actually make duration and delay and things work for animations, not just transitions. You can directly inline define things like your directions and your fill modes and the number of repeats and all kinds of cool stuff. You can even directly add classes for whether or not the animation should be running or whether or not it's paused, which is really nice because maybe this is on screen size or something like that. So let's jump back over and actually take a look at how that works. First things first, we just need to make sure that we actually add our plugin. I've actually already installed my plugin. So all that I need to do is require it within my array like this. And now we can start using this. For sake of separation, I've added a new component down here and we're gonna have a whole bunch of lines. So I'm just doing this in template literals. But from our starting point, we pretty much have the same thing. So I just have this kind of black box here. To actually get this running, let's just start by adding an animation. So we can just go animate. We'll just do the wiggle animation for now. And now let's say that we inline want to define the duration of this animation. Well, this used to be impossible, but now I can inline do something like duration, we'll say, 75, it's gonna be pretty fast. And we'll see that this now not only changes the transition duration, but also the animation duration. And if I save that, we now see that this goes really fast. I'm gonna bump that back up because that is way too fast. And now, honestly, I think we're kind of back at the starting point, but you get the idea. Maybe we actually wanna delay this animation whenever it first starts. We can also do that now. So we can do something like delay 1000. And now if I refresh the screen, we're gonna see that this pauses for a second and then it starts the animation once again. The default easing function that I've given for this is linear. We can see that right here and we may wanna change that as well. So I can now do that in line. I can say ease in out. And again, this is now also adding the animation timing function, not just the transition timing function. And now we get a kind of smoother easing animation like this. We can define things like the direct of our animation. So I could do something like direction alternate, and that's gonna give us this animation direction alternate like this. And it's kind of hard to tell given this is kind of going back and forth anyways, but we will see that we have this alternating direction rotation now. And we can even define how many times we want this to repeat. So I could say something like repeat once as opposed to infinite. Now, if we save that, we should see that this just runs one time. So if I refresh the screen, should wait a second, run, and then it will stop. Notice that whenever the animation stops, it actually kind of pops back to the middle. So we're restarting one more time, it'll animate, and then it'll go back to its initial position. If this isn't what you want, you can even do something like fill mode forwards, and this will stop the animation animation at its final position like this. One more time. There we go. So in short, we are now able to directly affect any of the different parameters of the animation directly with our normal Tailwind CSS. Now, one more kind of cool thing though that this also gives us, which I alluded to earlier, are these running and paused classes. We'll see that these actually can't be run at the same time, but this is changing the animation play state. And in order to show this, I'm gonna remove these right here and I'm gonna change my repeat back to, back to infinite. I'm gonna add a little piece of state up here at the top. This could definitely be done on screen size or you know any other number of things, but just to make this kind of easy to see what's happening, we'll add this piece of state. And then to this div, I will add an on click to toggle whether or not this animation should be running. Now, all that I'm gonna do is inside of my template literals here, say that if I am currently running, we should add the running class, else we will add the paused class. And now as my animation runs, I can click on it and it will stop. And then I can click on it again and it will continue to run. See, I can do this over and over again. It'll stop, pause, start, stop, start, stop. So super, super useful. It's definitely a long cry from just being able to do something like animate spin. Now that's gonna be it for this one today, guys. If you got anything out of it, I would massively appreciate a like and a subscribe. All of the code for this will be in a link in the description and I will see you guys next time. Peace.